charcoal is a little out of control. It's a little hard to control because it can be soft and it blows away and you just touch it and it changes. But all that to me makes for interesting possibilities. We're going to use a still life rather than a figure because with the figure we have a lot of understanding of anatomy and figure drawing which becomes a whole nother issue. So we're keeping to simple forms but that have different surface qualities, different appearances. So we can explore using charcoal it's possibilities in, in capturing different qualities of light, reflectiveness, matte finish, atmosphere. Okay, here I can make a little fine point with my kneaded eraser. I can make little slivers of light. Over here, same thing. Now this is a uh, different quality paper, so it's holding the charcoal more. That's when you want to experiment with different papers and find a paper that has just the right texture that you like. And then if I want to pull out a little lighter, I can go back over it with a little bit of this. White charcoal, I can do this. And then if I don't like those hatch lines, I want to have a soft transition digitally, what's known as a gradient, where it slowly goes from dark to light instead of a sudden contrast. I don't want the lines. One other tool I have is my thumb for softening things. This is what I use a lot because I get, I get too excited when I'm drawing to stop and pick up other things. But I also have these blending stumps, which are made just for this purpose, to blend and get this soft transition. And then I can keep going back and forth. A little eraser, a little more charcoal. A little more white. And if I want a little more blending stump, until I get exactly the texture, the value, the transition that I want. I extend all the lines beyond the shape because what that does, that helps me find my proportions relationship. If I extend this line, where does it hit this? And then I say, all right, this is a little too low or this is too high because it should hit it down here. If I extend it there, it hits down here. So this is a little bit lower. And this is here. And that makes sense because this is a little bit, that was a little too fat. Extending this line, where does it hit this? Over here. So this is slightly. And what happens by extending these lines, I first of all have a really energetic picture. I'm looking at something that's very static. There's nothing moving there. But my eye's moving around. And these extended lines sort of show you how my eye moves when it follows these directions. It goes this way, it goes this way. That's a kind of a stiff ellipse. I'm going to loosen it up and extend it. Get a little more oomph to this picture. And I'm still just mapping it out. But even in mapping it, I'm trying to give it some energy and find how the angles move, how the shapes move. Now, they don't literally move, but they move in my eye. And this, now I'm putting these values in these two side of this and this are the same value. This is a really good example of not drawing things but drawing light. These two are the same value. When I squint, I can't tell this one from this one. So my picture, I can't tell this one from this one. They're the same value and there's a sharp edge here. It's just this bit of light here and this is almost the same value. So this line almost disappears. I put those lines in. I was drawing things but now that I'm drawing value there's not a lot of difference. And what happens, my lines are going to slowly disappear. Now, when I start to get into very small shapes, like up here, I'm going to start to use my, this is my soft charcoal pencil. So I can get very, very specific. For example, this area, which is the drawing's a little off here. So I'm going to try to correct it a little bit. And it does this. I have this soft area. And I'm going to do this hatch line so I can start to get really subtle and discreet about the shapes. And how fine I take this, how 
much I get into the reflected light, reflected lights, lights that's not coming directly from the light source, but coming from the opposite direction, reflecting off the walls or another object, how much I get into that is my choice, as I said before, about how far I want to take the representational illusion. Mm -hmm.